and we're live what up guys so thought i'd do another broadcast at the end of the day and then peace out right and peace out of here thought i'd uh, clear up the madness give you guys some t tricks and tips what's up you're the first person i can't read your name but you know all right we got 11 people it's going fast thanks guys what's up what's up donna hi beautiful back hi tanya and linda hearts back to you guys what up hey julissa what's up hey guys i'm gonna give you some tricks and tips what's up hey people are coming in joining the chat I do another broadcast and talk about these suckers. Yes. What's up? Natalia, hello. You're looking for my looking forward to my live broadcast. Thank you very much. And honeybee? I have never been called honeybee, but I'll take it. Even though I don't eat honey anymore, I'm still sweet. I'll talk about supplements. I will. Maybe that should be the next broadcast. Is, the whole thing about supplementation. Hi, lady. For some reason, I can't stand to be called lady. Just be like, yo, what's up, Steph? <laughs> energy, energy. Got some energy. Boom. And the business and all that. Yes. Sweet and tough all in one. No, 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 don't be sorry. I'm totally joking. I'm totally joking. Boom. I'm totally joking about the lady stuff. It's just weird for me. <laughs> I guess I'm so much of a dork. I don't know if I'm, you know, that yet. I'm going, I'm going. Thank you, you guys. Everybody's coming in to the chat. This is the Mother Second Business at 50. What up? So excited to be 50 now. Oh, you're from Tahiti, French Polynesia. I've got to go there. I've got to. Of all the traveling that I do, I've got to go to Tahiti. Let's see. Yes. Very excited for this broadcast. You'd like to hear about what? I'd like to hear about period on keto. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about that. Menstrual cycles. Yes. I'm so old. I'm so old. I still got the business. <laughs> Somebody wrote, you're so old, but I'm like, I still got the business. I just have experience, that's all. 50 and fabulous, yes. I wanna teach you guys that it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still. Whoa! I don't even know what happened, and now I know it's super glitchy. I have no idea what happened. Thank you. I don't know what happened. It just, everything went blank on my phone, and I was about to, yeah, I'm live, guys, I'm live. I was about to restart my phone, or restart everything, and then it asked me, if I'm, my phone asked me, do I want to disconnect or resume the broadcast? That was weird, sorry, guys. You're 52 in four months, yes. You guys, just because we're getting up in 50 club and 40 club and 30 club does not mean, uh, well, we, we can talk about reproductive health, but first I want to go over some of my tips and tricks on how to get into your 59, right? Boom! Tell them! Tell them! <laughs> uh, carb constipation. Okay, you have to contextualize that. You're a vegetarian. Thank you, Jack, for announcing that. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys, I'm going to go into, uh, sorry for the glitch, now I'm going to go into my tricks and tips, and then I'm going to take you guys' questions and enjoy this lovely evening in California. Right? Turning 52, looking more like 22, what? But I would not want to be 22, you guys. I don't even want to touch the 20s anymore, like that's over. I think there's a glitch, there's a delay. I hope it fixes itself. Mother second business, right? Somebody wrote, mother second business, bam. Okay guys, we got 27 people in the chat 
and I want to grow it exponentially so people don't think I'm a weirdo just standing here talking about being my 50s. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go over what I consider to be the tricks and tips on how to keto adapt. Oh, Lord, have mercy with my Wi-Fi. This is going to be an interesting broadcast because I think the Wi-Fi is just horrible. It's like I have to turn off my phone and turn it on again. And I think there's a delay. Sorry, guys. Not constipation, carb, oh, conspiracy. <laughs> Sorry, I am quite a distance from my phone or I need some glasses. <laughs> They're like not carb constipation, but conspiracy. Okay, you'll have to contextualize that. I think that's a great question, I'm, although I'm not sure what it is. And let's just pray to the spaghetti gods that my phone does not freak out. Okay, let me go into the tricks and tips before the, the uh, Wi-Fi connection gets weird again. Uh, I think it's my Wi-Fi. I wish I turned it off, but it's too late now. All right, uh, this will be uh, available for the replay. Yes, it's recording onto YouTube. So if you guys want to um, uh, know when I'm going live, you have to subscribe and hit to push notification or something like that. Anyway, here we go. So I've got these, these are blue blockers. I actually have three different kinds of them. Uh, Conspiracy cause of Wi-Fi, exactly. Okay, so there's three different kinds. I'm too tired and lazy, not tired, but like too, I've been doing too much to find the third pair. So here's two different kinds. The third type of blue blocker I have are clear. They look like eyeglasses. And these are different levels of blocking out blue light exposure from, um, thank you. Right, I am the Forever 21 girl all day. Um, okay, but somebody said they like my outfit. But anyway, uh, so there's two different kinds here. Third one is clear, and they have different levels of blocking out the blue light. Now when I wear these, everything looks red or reddish orange. Boom, like this. But these obviously, thank you. Boom. <laughs> these obviously work the best, right? These are weaker and then the clear ones are uh, even have a slider effect. But like when I go on airplanes, if I don't want to be wearing these on a plane, I'll wear the clear ones because like everybody keeps like when I just came back from Iceland, it was like it never went dark. It was like until I actually arrived in L.A. So I left in the evening in uh, Iceland, flew throughout the night and it's just and people kept leaving the freaking window shade things open. So I pulled out my blue blockers, the clear ones, and I wore those, and it helped me get more sleepy. Now, as you guys know, uh, most of you have sleep issues. So blue light blocking glasses help block out the blue light that's affecting the medulla, the middle of the brain, the hypothalamus pituitary axis that is registering light, the circadian rhythm. These things work. Now, people always ask me, do you wear them when you're sleeping? And I'm like, huh? Why would you wear those when you're sleeping? You wear these, you know, like I said, these are different levels. You wear these when you're, um, uh, yes, you wear these when you're awake and you're looking at cell phones or television or the computer or going to the bathroom, you know, or anywhere there's lamps on because right now I have a big ass ring light on me. It's really annoying. So these help to block out the blue light to some varying degree. Now, like I said, these puppies, these are the bad boys. These really block out all light. I can't see the distinguish any lights, right? Bam! Um, modern devices. So blue light blocking glasses are great. You wear them when the sun goes down until you go to bed. Once you go to bed, you take them off. If you don't have blue light blocking glasses, please get a dimmer light or use candles because that strong light exposure, exposure because just using the different types of uh, screen uh, light adjustments on your technology is not enough because you've got house lamps. So you have to sit in a dim room to actually not get the registration of that blue light coming from technology. That technology is telling your brain that it's two o'clock in the afternoon 2 p.m. or 1400, as the rest of the world likes to use, uh, when it's at night. Um, one day I'll expose the tattoo on my back. Yes, 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 yes. One day. Clean on the front, nothing on the back. Or, I mean, big on the back. Okay, so, um, 
uh, if you're a night shift worker, there's the clear blue light blocking glasses. You can also, uh, the LED lights. Yeah, uh, also people have got uh, uh, insomnia. You have the circadian rhythm lamps that will get bright in the morning and start to uh, go down at night. So a lot of people use those when they're, you know, working from home or uh, sometimes at their job. They'll use those types of lights. A lot of people who are inside, you need to be exposed to more blue light exposure. Um, there are full, from head to toe, vitamin D lamps for people who don't get enough vitamin D. And I suggest that over the supplements. You stand in front of that, I think as you stand there for, uh, I think it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something on both sides and you get tons of vitamin D3 uh, from these lamps. You can go and Google, I forget the name, the brands that do full body size lamps. All right, other tricks and tips are um you're doing that right now okay cool uh you can get all i get all this stuff on amazon i don't even know what going to a store is like anymore i mean i've got this kind of love-hate relationship with amazon because it's such a corporation but seriously i don't even know when i go to a store for these types of things all right so also we've got it's cold and flu season so couple things. One, when I travel, thank you, <laughs> thank you. I always use these. These, This is coconut oil and uh, oh, I forgot my, hold on you guys, hold on. One second. Let's see here. I said boom, chicka boom. I said boom, chicka raka, chicka raka, chicka boom. Okay, so. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm almost back, guys. Hold on a sec. See, when I travel, I'm a travel freak because I travel all the time and I'm always looking for the best ways to travel and try to remain strict on keto. So these, first of all, this is coconut oil. Trader Joe's has them. It's liquid because it's hot here in Los Angeles right now. But this is really, really good. And I always use this uh, kook. <laughs> Kuk in Swedish means penis. Kuk. But anyway, this travel brand of Tupperware, it's BPA free and spill proof. And I use these when I travel all the time. I have them in every friggin' size and they can either be big or pop down to smaller size. So these are some of my keto travel tips. Now, when I travel, I always bring about three of these. So like when I was in Iceland and I went quad, through the vol volcanic rubble or you know if I'm climbing the glaciers and I need something to eat I can uh, you know start off with the small and plop it out and put food in it take it in my bag and off I go now um, another thing that I think is really great through cold and yeah I'm gonna take questions after this I promise uh, I'm not talking about Donald Trump I actually don't care right now at all I'm talking about keto yo all right so um this stuff is the bomb check this out might be backwards but this is oregano oil or oil of oregano concentrated oregano this stuff listen to me people like i keep telling people they don't listen these two combined together is a powerful antimicrobial so if i have an abscessed tooth if I have a cold or a flu, I put these two together. Now, if I had a coconut oil jar, I'd take about a tablespoon and put a couple of drops of this. It's like hot sauce because you can't put a lot on. I mean, it will just burn your tongue. And I mix them together and I oil pull for about 20 minutes. And I, I get it really under the tongue because the, the skin under the tongue is so thin it can absorb within the bloodstream. And you swish and you swash and you swish and you swish. You spit it out. You take a glass of water, spit 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 because so much bacteria is coming through the mouth you get it out and if i don't get sleep if i'm not getting enough sleep which has happened that's the only time my immune system gets all cracked out is i'll go like two weeks of not sleeping after flying back uh yeah black seed oil is amazing as well but this oregano oil is my favorite and i'll mix these two together in an oil pool and I just never ever get sick. So for those who keep doing the Z packs and the antibiotics, what are you thinking? People have got tooth infections and are asking me about root canals. 
I had an abscess so bad, my face was blown out to here. I did these two together, gone. And the doctor's like, you either pull that tooth, because tooth, I didn't want to get a root canal because they're dangerous and give you a heart attack. <laughs> All right, so these are two more. I'm going to go on with some more. Um, I use transdermal uh, magnesium. So uh, this is the transdermal. Yes, it's backwards. I'm sorry, guys. Trans means it can be absorbed. The skin is obviously an organ that absorbs everything. So be careful for the lotion and deodorant and products that you put on your body because it's being absorbed into the bloodstream, which can block your keto adaptation. All the toxins and medication that you guys are on, a lot of you guys are on like 50 supplements and I don't know how much medication uh, that will block the ability to produce viable ketones. Um, now, you can't, I don't care what brand, uh, it doesn't matter. That was the brand that was not sold out at Whole Foods um, for the oregano oil. Um, so, are you talking about the magnesium? This is Life Flow, I think. I got it at Whole Foods. I used to order another kind. I forget the name from Amazon. It's too expensive. This is much better. I mean, it's cheaper and it does the same thing. Now, you, now you guys who have uh, malabsorption issues, you're going to need to do more than a, a lotion or spray magnesium because a lot of you guys just get, aren't getting enough or not getting enough magnesium in and then you're going to have to take a sublingual, an oral magnesium to get enough magnesium in because that's the one thing that, that, that you have to do on keto because our electrolytes get real screwed up on keto. Which reminds me, you guys, you want to do Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt, this is Himalayan, it's a pink salt. Now it does have magnesium in it, but it's so low, so you can't rely on magnesium salt, uh, I mean uh, magnesium in the Himalayan salt to get enough of your magnesium in. But the problem with you guys is you're not getting enough potassium, which I should have a bag of spinach. I do have spinach, but I don't have it in front of me. You want spinach, it's high in uh, potassium, it's great. Uh, avocados, now some of you guys have histamine intolerance or latex allergy, you can't handle avocados. Then there's spinach and you'll have to rotate it. Another thing you can get your potassium from is bone broth soup, um, but you can't cook. Most likely people who've got histamine intolerance cannot cook their bone broth up to the 20, uh, suggested 20 hours. You could probably just do a five hour cook because of the malate, gluteate, wait, no, not malate, glutamate that people have a lot of sensitivity to, to an amino acid. For those who have histamine intolerance, for those who do not go the full 20 hours to get that potassium extracted from the bone marrow if you guys cannot handle spinach or avocado. But being doing um, um, okay, can't, I, I shouldn't read right now because there's a lot of things being said and I want to get to all the, the stuff. And then I'm going to take your guys' questions. Um, I don't know about store bought bone broth. It's not that hard to make, but okay, I'm going to take these afterwards. So you need to get your electrolytes in. That's the problem with people who do keto for a long time is that when you start intermittent fasting or you start to skip meals, you're actually going too low on electrolytes and that creates a host of problems. I know because I've done strict keto for nearly 10 years and I know that's the number one problem that I have. It's not the heart attack from eating all the fat. It's not all these other things like destroying my thyroid and all this weird stuff and cholesterol buildup. It's too low electrolyte. All right, um, let's talk about candida on keto. So, candida, pathogens, bacteria, boom. I saw this guy talking about it, ordered it on Amazon. Amazon is called Loracetin. Amazing. People, you guys who've got the keto rash, I don't have a keto rash anymore, but trying to keep those candida spores down. This is something that's concentrated chloric acid, whereas if, when you use like grapeseed extract and all this other stuff, oregano oil, sometimes that other stuff spikes your blood sugar and you have to cycle it in and out because your body gets used to it. Whereas lower acetin is constantly antiviral, antimicrobial. It's what's in breast milk. This stuff is amaze, not sweaty balls. Really cool stuff going on right here. I don't see any of your comments, so hold them up. Hold them, hold them, hold them. All right. I'm just grabbing a bunch of stuff off the counter, guys. So you guys need to check your blood sugar, right? This is the pen with the needle. You put it in and check your blood sugar. Now, 
What you want to do with your blood sugar, for those who just are chiming in, is that you want to check your blood sugar in the beginning. The first month fasted, number one, that's the most important number, but you also want to test your glucose all day long to see if you have a consistent blood sugar or is your blood sugar like this and then like this and then like this and then like this. Now, in theory, when you wake up, it should be kind of low because you haven't eaten anything. So when people wake up with the early morning dawn's effect or physiological insulin resistance response, you probably have been having fracked up blood sugar, fracked, fracked, fracked forever. And do not realize it until you get a glucometer and start testing your blood sugar. A lot of people have high blood sugar in the morning because they're having a hypoglycemic response in the middle of the night. That's what wakes you up. So but when the blood sugar uh, gets too low, we, uh, the body will, uh, you know, the adrenals will start cranking up the cortisol to bring back up your blood sugar so you don't go into a coma. So understanding the algorithms of your blood sugar all day long is pretty imperative when you're doing a ketogenic protocol just to understand at the very beginning what's going on. Now you only test once, you guys keep testing three, four times and getting different numbers. Every time you do this, your blood sugar changes. This, your blood sugar changes. Get up, you don't go to the bathroom and walk around and pick your nose. You actually have to test right away as soon as you wake up to understand what's, what your, tr the true number of fasted looks like. Now with that said, um, uh, you guys are listening, it's awesome, okay. Um, you want your blood sugar, yes, between 60 and 70 milligrams per deciliter. Now that's about 3.8 to about 4.4 for you guys who use the millimolar in glucose. Now you could have glucose between 69, sorry, did I say 60? Somebody wrote 60 and 70. No, it's 69 and 80 is the range. That's what you want to look for, 69 and 80. Now you can be in ketosis and have it go over 80 because blood sugar never remains in that tight zone all the time, but it will bounce back to that tight zone, right? So if you do something that's fight or flighty, if you do something that's stressful, your blood sugar is gonna shoot up quite high. But then it should go, it should just level right back into that ketogenic zone. Now you want your ketones to be between a 1.8 and a 3.0. If they start getting to 3.5 and 4.0 and 5.4 or 6 or 7, this means that your ketones are rising and they have nowhere to go. They're not getting into the cells to be used. So great that you're producing ketones, but you're not using them. So my trick is and tips is to uh, use a glucometer to at least establish if you're making them. Now some people have their ketones in a 2.0 sweet spot zone, but they still are tired. That means that you're losing ketones via the urine, which then an oat test would be great. It's an organic acid test. This will check what's going on with your gut permeability you know, bacteria, pathogens, candida, overgrowth, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and also if you're producing enough glutathione, if you're having any, uh, any type of um, deficiencies, you'll see things end up in uh, the metabolites in your urine, and then they analyze it and tell you now there's also stool tests and blood tests. I think one of the main tests that everybody should get is their reproductive hormone tests. I think that men should do a testosterone or a sex hormone panel focusing on the free and total testosterone. Women should also know what their hormonal panels are to understand if they're estrogen dominant and by how much, if their progesterone is too low in trying to understand your energy levels. Your adrenal glands are connected to your reproductive system. Now, a lot of women have polycystic or PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and don't find out until they start doing keto, test the blood sugar super high, and it starts making sense why they have too much facial hair or grow too much hair because the testosterone is too high, and why the blood sugar is running high and all these types of things. Now, with that said, do I have more tricks and tips? Now, another thing is to understand that, I mentioned these things in videos 5,000 times, right? So understanding how much blood sugar that your body can actually handle, it's five grams, which is a teaspoon, as you see in size, you see the size difference. Um, this is all you can eat. Now, that doesn't mean you can have ketchup or like, you know, some kind of candy and you have a, like a little bite and it's still under five grams. No, this is stuff that has fiber. So for example, avocados are high in carb, but they have so much fiber and fat 
that slows down the rate at which um, tra la la wait a minute oh we gotta remove some troll bye bye troll okay Okay, I don't know why you didn't get the live feed notice. My phone was having some weird reactions. But um, this is how much our, our body can handle before the pancreas over responds. So I try to explain to people, there are two reasons why you get fat. Well, there are two main reasons. Number one is insulin. Number two, it's estrogen. So it's not eating fat that makes you fat. I still don't understand why people don't think about the concept that we're made of fat, protein, and water. We're not made out of chia seeds and bread trees and Snickers candy bar bushes. We're made out of fat, protein, and water. We're not made out of chicken breast and tuna and egg whites at all. Well, we are made out of protein, so <laughs> I should take that back. Uh, your YouTube is buffering. I hope everybody else is getting the live feed. I think on the replay there's going to be uh, issues with the Wi-Fi, so sorry for this recording. But I'll have to do another one where there's not a problem with the uh, glitching and all this mess. So, cruciferous vegetables, right? So you're doing uh, cruciferous, the green, crunchy, fibrous vegetables, which about, it's coming through a bit glitchy. Is that for everybody? I put up put up a number one if it's glitchy or two if it's not glitchy. So just let me guys know if it's one if it's glitchy or two if it's not glitchy. It's split 50-50. Hmm. Well, sorry guys if it's glitchy. It's if I Restart the broadcast. It's just too much of a pain in the butt. So I low resolution. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. And next time I will turn off my Wi-Fi and just use my uh, phone service, which will be a lot better. Okay. All right. Your video is fine. It's perfect to you. Okay. So, yeah. So, this is how some people are going to have it glitchy and some people are not. Okay. So, um, like I said, my tricks and tips are make sure that you keep your main meals, right? Because we don't want to snack on carbs. We don't want our carbohydrate count to get too high. So, we want to snack on fat. And if you guys have hypoglycemia, then you would eat a fatty protein with fat. If you guys do not have hypoglycemia, straight fat, pure fat, like fat bomb, fatty tea, avocado, fat, fat, fat. You know, 98% pork belly fat, like lots of fat for snacks. Um, I don't really have people eat snacks on keto because you wanna feed your hunger. It's to stabilize blood sugar and to get enough fat in to create viable ketones. So understand that this is how much carbohydrate that has fiber in it you can have per meal. That's it. That's it. So, okay. I think I've gone over now. When it comes to exercise, I've talked about this before. This is another trick, trick tip. Audio is perfect. Um, oh, I just found my other pair of blue blockers. Are they here? Dang it, they're not here. Where are they? Oh, goodness. They're somewhere. Normally in here is my clear uh, pair of glue blockers. All right, whatever. Okay. You guys can see I've like put everything in bags for when I travel. So this is what I take with me when I travel. Okay. And I'll do like 15 minute workout. Now in uh, Iceland, I was able to go to a gym quite often. Uh, so I didn't really need to do this that much, but I do time under tension method. I've shown this a gazillion times. I'll show it again. When you work out, you want to get rid of your cardio, your kickboxing, your ru running, sprint, sprinting, hit training for at least a couple weeks to create viable K 
ketones and to keep your adrenals from over freaking out. And so you want to do a time under tension method, which is three second negative. So that's going slow. And as you can see, I'm contracted, right? You see contraction. If I go like this, the muscle's not contracting as much. So we want nice sliding filaments as we go. This is a negative uh, direction. This is the positive. So you're more explosive on the positive. You don't do three seconds up. So you're more explosive. And then you're going slow on the negative and learning how to breathe. That's what a lot of people do not do, is they do not breathe when they do resistance training. So, um, it's the same thing if I were to do lateral raises, right? I'm gonna slow on the negative, I'm gonna explode up, and then I'm gonna go three seconds slow on the negative. Same thing if I were to do tricep extensions. So, it's called time under tension, the standard with Doug McGuff's uh, way to do it. The slide is too bright, I think. Um, let's see how it is like this. Is it still too bright? Okay, I just turned off the ring light. Um, Doug McGuff's methods are 15 to 20 second negatives. I think that's unnecessary. I think the three second negatives uh, work the best if you're really learning how to contract the muscle. So resistance training in the beginning is what I suggest uh, for those who don't work out 12 minutes of working out in the morning before you go to work or do anything is what I suggest. Full body circuit, nothing under nine repetitions. Uh, that means that in the beginning you want the reps to be higher, ideally between 12 and, or 10 and 12 reps, uh, four sets per uh, exercise. And this is mostly for people who are not uh, athletes. Um, these are suggestions for more like the average person. Yay, I made it through all my suggestions. I know that there's more, but I can't think of them right now. But I thought I'd do just a quick impromptu, impromptu live broadcast, and now I'm gonna take your questions. So sodium, you could do about five grams per day. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, squats, uh, I don't have the camera set up. My knees busted, you guys. I used to be a professional skateboarder. I used to skate big vert ramps back in the day with Tony Hawk. And uh, so I do sumo squats, toes are pointed out. I um, don't do a full range of motion because it hurts my knee. If you go to my Facebook, which is Stephanie, the business person, or to my Instagram, Stephanie Ketogenic, you will see a lot of little quick workouts that I do. I mean, and a lot, I do a lot of them. And showing people how I built my glutes, right? Oh, my glutes and my hands, how I built this mother sucker. Um, with having so many surgeries on my left knee and having hip problems from skateboarding and falling on hips. I also need a hip replacement, but because of keto, I'm able to keep the inflammation down. So, okay, what's sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes are not ketogenic. You want to keep your carbs under 20 net carbs per day, and you wouldn't be able to do that with sweet potatoes. So, unfortunately, that would just be low carb, high fat, and not crossing over to ketogenesis. Can I give you some av avocado alternatives? Yes, fat bombs. You can take um, butter and coconut oil, and I'll put like cinnamon or vanilla bean powder with a little Himalayan salt, and make, uh, melt it, and then put it in little molds and stick it in the refrigerator and eat that. Um, everyone get the likes up, right? I forgot. <laughs> We're 76 people and 60 likes in the chat. So if you guys like this broadcast, I guess the algorithms of YouTube and also people finding themselves to be curious. Uh, people look at the likes. I never do for some reason, but maybe I'm just because I'm old school. Let's see, do you have to eat three meals? Yes, in the beginning you have to eat three meals and actually a couple of fat snacks in between so the adrenals don't start doing the gluconeogenesis. Well, it's not quotations, but gluconeogenesis reaction and starting to create glucose. If your body starts creating glucose, you won't adapt, right? That's why we gotta keep the blood sugar in a lower, tighter range and under 80 milligrams per deciliter or 4.4 millimolar, or the brain just wants to digress back to the glucose. Let's see here, doing keto now for two months, but my fasted blood sugar is still, wait, still over sleep, crap, wait. Okay, your sleep is, however my sleep is crap, that's why. Are you waking up in the middle of the night because you're probably hypoglycemic? 
I would have a little bit like two tablespoons of a fatty meat and two tablespoons of like coconut oil or fat uh, 30 to 45 minutes before you go to bed and that tends to slow stop that hypoglycemia waking you up in the middle of the night and you know kind of stopping that early morning dawns effect that people are physiological insulin resistance response see thoughts on neuropath naturopaths um some of them are good most of them are supplement pushers I mean, some of them do good work, but they, it seems like with the holistic functional medicine doctors, some of them will do great work and then they'll blow it by adding too many supplements. You know, doctors tend to not talk to the people, really go like, all right, who are you? You have hypoglycemia? You have, have you been skipping meals your whole life? You know, uh, you, uh, you are hypothyroid? Uh, what kind of stresses, what environment did you grow up in, what kind of diet did you grow up on as a child? They don't talk about that stuff. It's too personal. They'll look at labs and start giving you supplements and drugs, and that's with everyone, and that's what I don't like. I take, uh, I've been messing around a little bit with, well, you guys see. This is one I take, for sure. So that's one, that's magnesium. And I've been messing around a little bit with this uh, loracetin and uh, I cycle chlorella for the heavy metal toxicity from living in this dirty ass city. That's it. I have like a, I've got like a hundred supplements and I was like, stop. You know, supplements have their purpose. Like people who've got no gall gallbladder or sludged up gallbladder, you know, taking ox bile can really help. People got low stomach acid, betaine, HCL. Um, people who've got no gallbladder, unfortunately need to be on ox bile. Most of them, not everyone, all the time. Do, I do not take a pre-workout, Ava or Eva, because that would just destroy my adrenal glands. And it's just toxic man-made garbage. So why would I do this to this amazing 50-year-old temple? Nope. All those bad habits I did before are gone. Bye-bye. Uh, when, when the time under tension, oh, it's exhaling when you contract and, and inhaling when you release. For the breathing, somebody's asking about the breathing. Yay, the ratios between people in chat and the likes went up. Thanks, guys. How do you heal the liver? Well, the main thing is getting some sleep at night and to get off everything that created a fatty liver. And I mean everything. And then if you don't have a histamine intolerance, you can do things like uh, turmeric and ginger and plant pectins like apple cider vinegar and lemon warm lemon water to help pull out the junk out of the liver and milk thistle and time patience website is stephaniepersen.com don't i sound like a used car salesman stephaniepersen.com okay oh yeah you guys i'm writing the ultimate keto book i always gotta remember and push the stuff i'm doing i'm writing a keto book the, all the all that other stuff is there are like seriously tiny little nuggets of information the rest is crap do you have any thoughts on zero carb why would you, Dan, why would you do zero carb? For what purpose? For what purpose? Well, I, I don't understand why anybody would do zero carb. You don't need to. It's not the carbs. You know, if you're eating cruciferous vegetables and eating handfuls it, at mealtime, it's not that that spikes your blood sugar. It's you. It's stress. It's the adrenals. It's crap sleep. It's eating too much protein. It's not if you're doing uh, cruciferous. Okay, do you have, um, have you gone through menopause? Hell no. Hell no. I'm 50 years old, 28 day, day cycle, six day long menstrual cycle, on point, boom! Uterus in perfect condition. No, I, uh, FSH levels, kablammy. No, I am really, really good at protecting my stress. Hot flashes come from the adrenal glands, so when you push yourself beyond measure, get crap sleep, don't eat and, and, and drive the car in fifth gear, the body is the car, you start to develop hot flashes because of too much cortisol and adrenaline entering the bloodstream. That's why women develop. And because of estrogen dominance, because of all those things, blood sugar this up, blood sugar down, but up and down and up and down. And the instability of blood sugar also creates the flashes because the adrenal glands are like eh, eh, all day long. If you eat too much pork rinds, it's a problem because you can raise your protein too high and you won't adapt. 
reading Keto Clarity, they have uh, experts. Yes, I'm one of the experts in Keto Clarity. Mind you, Keto Clarity was like four years ago now. And even what I don't even know what I said. I just know that that's four years ago. I won't even read what I said back then. I was on the very beginning of really understanding, even though I'd been doing keto for years prior to that, I didn't know what I was saying. But you know, there are, there are snapshots of good information in Keto Clarity. Who am I dogging you out? Wait, wait, your post-workout 0.6? What, your ketones or glucose? Your ketones are 0. What? You gotta, don't, you don't ever measure your ketones. You don't, it's only fasted. I hope you mean, uh, I mean, you don't measure your ketones other than fasted in the morning on an empty stomach. Otherwise, the number's just useless. You're wasting strips. Uh, people are like, look at this. I check my blood sugar in the middle of the night, still high help. What? I don't know you. I don't know how you breathe. I don't know your posture. I don't know if you're in Detroit near a factory. Like, I don't know if you got BPA plastics in your life. I don't know if you got arguing with kids or partners. I don't know if you're stuck in traffic. Like, I don't know the state of your liver. Like, all of those things matter why you waking up in the middle of the night and blood sugar's high. And that's just how it is. All those things matter. I wish it was that simple where I could just go, oh, just do this. But blue blockers will help. You know, great sleep hygiene before you go to bed, diaphragmatic breathing, meditating, like listening to audiobooks. Uh, if you're checking to see if you've got hypoglycemia during the day and, you know, adding some fat or some fatty protein in between your meals to stabilize your blood sugar. Um, these things connecting to the circadian rhythm, going to bed early. All of these things will help you not wake up in the middle of the night with high blood sugar. No, I don't take vitamin C for heavy metals. You must have seen a video like 100 years ago. <laughs> Just chlorella. No, you take uh, whoever's... It's not that I said you, you can eat less. I said you have three main meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in between. Fat snacks. Uh, what do you want to know about the hormone profile? And is it a man or a Martin? What do you, want, what do you need to know? Men who've got low testosterone or high levels of dehydrotestosterone? Or what is it? You know, we have three estrogens, progesterone, testosterone, things like non-organic foods, right? The pesticides on foods, they jack men's testosterone. They start producing dehydrotestosterone, losing their hair, getting bald. They have too much estrogen in the body. Men, men, right? Not breathing right, not sleeping right. Carbohydrate foods, skipping meals will make your blood sugar unstable and down goes the testosterone. Like I said, the last broadcast, men, man's total testosterone should be, if I were a man, I want my testosterone between 800 and 1100. But most y'all hover around like 300, 200. That's just too low. And women, we're all estrogen dominant. Heavy metals take clay, I'd, cilantro. Yeah, they can help, they can help. You know, red light exposure, cilantro, chlorella, the, the, uh, the clay, the bentonite clay and stuff like that. I don't have a favorite fat bomb recipe. I'm just eating clean right now, to be honest. I'm just, like, I have literally made every carb replacement. Cookies, pizza, muffins, bread, tortillas, Mexican food, crackers. Like, yo, I've made it all. The fat bombs. And I'm bored of making all that stuff now. I just eat it clean. I don't think there's a home test. I think that the best testosterone test is a blood test. Men know your testosterone levels, poor sleep, alcohol, caffeine, skipping meals, that intermittent fasting, you know, when you already have adrenal issues or hypoglycemia and then you make things worse. You're welcome for the live feed. Yeah, okay, so your testosterone is 225. If I was a male, that's way too low. I'm 50, and as you guys can see, I mean, it's so diffused, but I've got pretty bubbly muscle, um, and, uh, uh, so, uh, women's testosterone is between, I believe it's like 14 and 15, uh, to 70. So I'm pretty sure I'm up in the 70 range, if not 70 with enough testosterone. It's not for me because I have so much less testosterone than a man. I have to make sure that I'm absorptive and that the, the testosterone is binding on the receptor and getting in to the cells so you can see in my body that I, I I know that I have some sort of estrogen dominance but you don't see 
um, you know, the, uh, you can't see this, the stupid phone only gives you like this much space to freaking do a live podcast. Um, but you can see on my body shape that I'm not highly estrogen dominant or you'd see fat pockets and, you know, estrogen makes women soft and flat and it makes men soft and flat as well. So men, if you have a hard time with the gains, you might want to know where your estrogen's sitting at and your testosterone. Uh, so if you're starting to sweat after a fatty tea, um, I don't know if you have a problem with the fat, you know, if you have a hard time digesting the fat, um, that could be a problem or if the tea itself is making you hot because it's still summer in the U.S. Uh, does help increase testosterone. Now, it's not doing keto that helps increase testosterone. It is your application of it. So uh, cholesterol, your sex hormones are made 100% out of cholesterol. So people who are doing bodybuilding who do uh, like, you know, egg whites and no fat and all this garbage, they actually start to develop thyroid issues. I live in LA, I know a lot of men and women who develop low T3 um, and start to have a hard time getting a woody uh, because their fats get too low and then they start to question the t- t- uh, testosterone. Heavy sweating, adrenaline issue, yes. Uh, no, it's, it can be other issues. It uh, flashes are your adrenal. It's not just heavy sweating, it's when you flash hot sweat out of nowhere, especially at night, that's adrenal, not just sweating heavily in general. I don't use MCT oil anymore. Uh, I use coconut oil because it's got lauric acid. Lauric acid is antiviral, antimicrobial, anti, antifungal. It's amazing. It's great for the brain. Um, so I don't waste my MCT anymore. I, in the beginning, I bought it and did videos on it, and now I don't give a crap about it. Yeah, uh, you're still tired doing keto. Uh, Renee, your fats might be too low. Uh, you might have hypoglycemia in the middle of the night. You might have thyroid issue. Now, the thyroid's not gonna show up on a oat test. Oat test is really um, uh, gonna really start to see what metabolites are ending up in the urine. And metabolites are just stuff in the body. Uh, for candida, people got candida die off, and they might develop die off of this because it kills that candida pretty amazingly. So yeah. All right, we got a troll that's just got to go. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored from troll comments. Oh, okay, no, 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 that's not a troll comment. My bad. Uh, body hair, excessive hair uh, in women, Martin, is commonly from uh, too high levels of testosterone, which is often polycystic ovarian syndrome, and a lot of women don't know that they have it. That's from poor diet, blood sugar like this, like that, like this, like that. Progesterone drops, estrogen rises, and then testosterone rises, and it causes havoc. Blood sugar runs too high, they tend to be insulin resistant. Women who've got PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. We got 82 people in the chat and 85 likes. The likes are over the amount of people. Thank you, you guys. Awesome. Uh, yeah, what, uh, what I think is really delicious is to take fatty pork, like pork belly, and you boil it for like like five, 10 minutes, and then you bake it, right? Oof. You like glaze it with some butter and then bake that pork belly for like 45 minutes. Duh. Rub it with salt before you bake it. So good. So good. Give a nice little salt rub with some Himalayan salt. Delish. And be careful with the coconut milk, you guys. It's not a keto snack for people who are still trying to adapt because it's just too many carbs in the water. Uh, the veggies that I see have seen that are most problematic, you mean keto-approved veggies or non-keto-approved veggies? Can you answer that question? I can pass for 25. It's my mouth, right, and my attitude. <laughs> It does not pass for 25. It does not, but this is me close up, guys. This is fitty. There's no such thing as seasonal keto. You either do it or don't do it. No seasonal keto. Organ meats are fantastic, fatty. You got you, all of them are amazing. Just be careful for the liver because it's high in carb when you cook it. 
to monitor blood sugar ketones and the overall way I feel. I have no reaction to Brazil nuts, macadamia nuts. Your thoughts? Um, well, explain is your name. Um, I would need to talk to you personally. So this is your, you know, understanding of yourself, which most, most people are very subjective when they say, I do well. And when I start asking deeper questions, they're like, oh, I never thought of that. Ate calf liver for dinner. Look at you, kablammy. So packed with nutrition and actually more vitamin C in liver than in a orange. Yes, uh, raw livers. No, cooked livers, high in carbs. So people are like, don't cook it too much. No, no, uh, macadamia nuts are somewhat. Good night, Martin. Good night. Have a, have a wonderful sleep. I eat, everybody's different, right? So I'm five foot three. I eat around 50 to 53 grams of total protein a day. That's all I need. That's all I need. And I still got the gains, 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 gains. As you guys can see, got the gains. I'm 50. My hormones should be premenopausal, but they're not because I've done keto for almost 10 years and I've been strict. I don't mess around with my health. All or nothing. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? All of a sudden the screen goes dead of comments. Okay. Uh, no nuts. Good night. Yeah. How much meat a day? Okay. Yeah. We're still in the same. Seem to cause gout flare for, okay. So Sandra, the gout problem really comes down to the stress and sleep. So if you can't sleep that uric acid buildup, you know, the purines build up and create the flare ups in the feet. So you really got to get the stress down. If you can get the stress down and the CRP markers and the, and the inflammation, your gout will not flare up as much. Okay, see, cacao butter. It's just, it looks like white chocolate. So you can melt it. You could put it in and make it as a tea. You can cook with it like chocolate. It's just like chocolate. It is chocolate. It's another species of chocolate without the uh, mycotoxins. Acting on the face from keto, you're doing something wrong. I don't know what fats you're eating. Do you know what I mean? Are you eating nuts as your fats? Are you eating cheese as your fats? Somebody's like, I have acne on keto. It's like, that doesn't mean anything. I've got to know the details. Do not count the protein in vegetables because they are incomplete proteins and do not over you know, over exceed your, a lot of protein. It's only from essential proteins from animals. Drinking water with a lot of fat to me, blah, blah, blah. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day because it calms the adrenal glands from cranking out too much adrenaline and cortisol. Cheese has casein and casein is a growth factor and tears up people's guts. Cheese is just garbage. And then people are starting to realize that now. And I, we haven't even gone into the fact that it's from sick cows that eat corn or is injected with freaking steroids and, you know, antibiotics because they have like, you know, pussy nipples and all this stuff. Uh, if you have grass fed butter, if you have no uh, aversion or no problem, peanuts are garbage. They're lagoon. They're legumes. They're just, they have lectins, garbage. Uh, then, then the butter fat, don't give up that if you don't have a histamine reaction to it. It's one of the best fats with CLAs and ALAs and all this like uh, fat soluble vitamins in it. Uh, you can do as many coconut oil tablespoons as you want as long as you don't, doesn't turn your stool into loose poo poo. Sense of behavior is amazing. Yeah. When you put, when you give children a lot of fat to eat, ghee is good, yeah. Um, it's amazing to watch the behavior change instead of carbohydrates or starches. Uh, any spike is a spike, so it can be like one milligram per deciliter or 200, but you really raise an eyebrow when it goes, after two hours of eating, if you started off at, let's say, 80 milligrams per deciliter and two hours later it's 90, you know, you're not, you're not adapting. You can use some ketones, but they're not completely viable. And you won't reap the benefits of ketogenesis. Keto is not only good for a 12 or 13 year old girl, it's good for an infant and a baby in utero. It's good for everyone.
it just has to be done correctly. This is the reason why I'm doing these live video series, you guys. People are doing it the wrong way. People who've done keto for like six months are starting to tell other people how to do it. And they don't factor in thyroid, adrenal, prior inflammation, if you've got a functioning gallbladder or not, how's your stomach at? They don't talk about that stuff. It's a tragedy, the poor information on the internet. Tragedy. Like, there's only one way. You either adapt or you don't. There's, not, there's no refeeding, there's no alcohol, there's no caffeine, there's none of that. No, I don't get cravings at all. It's, it's absolutely incredible how the cravings just, they're gone. Food is just food for me now. It's not entertainment. Uh, filtered water because bottled water has got, it's BPA plastic and it's expensive and blah. I, if I travel, of course I'm going to do bottled water. What am I going to do? I'm in freaking Bali. I'm going to drink the tap water. No, then I'll do the bottle, bottled water. Yes, Deborah's like, is amazing for kids. I agree with her. No cravings. I don't have cravings for anything, to be honest. And I was a sugar freaking addict. I was like, and then I became a stevia addict. Now it's all gone. I told you, I used to make all those carpet placements, you know, butter muffins and sweet things. It's all gone now. Brownies and stuff. I'm really bad at remembering the names of certain things, but uh, I ordered this filter. I do two different kinds of filters. Can't remember. One's a Brita, the other one's a special filter. And I filter my water twice and drink it. I never had the keto flu. Um, the biggest signs of keto flu that I had is maybe low electrolytes, low magnesium, muscle cramps. Um, maybe also, uh, maybe a little candida, but nothing, die off, but nothing that was like freaking me out. Constipation happens when you're not getting enough fluid in. Bowels lock up because you drop water so quickly. Uh, veggies that kick you out of your keto adaptation or anything that have more carbs like potatoes, yellow squash, zucchini, um, uh, onions. These are the suspicious ones. Uh, bell peppers, those things are clear carrots, corn. No, I never lose my energy. Bloating is uh, from gut permeability problems. You're having a hard time digesting something, and it could be from a couple of different reasons. Uh, greens fiber is good for constipation, but if if you didn't have a gut problem. You wouldn't need fiber, right? Poop should just come out of your butt every day. Not a problem, but people have gut issues. So they have a hard time with their stools and so then they'll need fiber. <laughs> my cycle hits, regulated my hormones like the boss. Uh, organic vegetables are pretty darn important because the pesticides are so damaging to our hormones. Fiber constipates you more. You know, a lot of people have like candida, so addressing candida or uh, SIBO will also kind of fix that can, uh, constipation. You start to, I would start candida for, I mean candida, listen to me. I would start keto for children by graduating slowly down and using sweet potato as like a fun food, yellow squash, spaghetti squash, things of this nature. You can start to do a little bit of the carb replacements, like the coconut flour flax pancakes, make the food fun. You, know, you could do like milkshakes or you could do berries with coconut cream, um, make it like a sweet little yogurty thing. You can do rice pudding in the beginning with white rice because brown rice, sh the shell is toxic. <laughs> your cycle hits your zombie. Um, your hormones are fluctuating too radically. Your uh, estrogen probably slams down too fast. Or progesterone. We get like all these questions and nothing. Flax seeds, yes. Um, chia seeds, no. There's, they just make people's blood sugar spike and it's making me question their lectin uh, content. 
Yes, your son has spaghetti squash and he's six. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't uh, monitor my numbers anymore, but for, for people who just start, it's the first four to six weeks you want to test your blood sugar every day. Ketones once or twice, uh, once a week or twice a month, just to see where they're at, to see if they're viable. Even if your blood sugar is high, just know if you can make ketones. And you can also test your blood sugar all day long to see if it fits within a ketogenic range. So two hours post meals, or you could also do it post workout by 30 minutes to see if exercise stresses your adrenals out through gluconeogenesis. There's no such, well, I, no, okay. People who do uh, vegetarian keto or are like 85 times more likely to not adapt. Sorry. Can't just eat a bunch of mono foods. The body doesn't like that in eggs. No. And mercury filled fish. Kind of SOL as a vegetarian. But butter's good. Non marinated steak every day. Sure. If, as long as it's grass fed. You use a glucometer. Precision extra, freestyle, or rely on. Pumpkin seeds, no. Lectins. She's like, it's called a glucometer. She's a monitor name, glucometer, spelled glucometer, but pronounced glucometer, precision extra, freestyle, or rely on. You can eat veggies, just eat like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, asparagus, cabbage, you can have green beans, uh, Brussels sprouts, yeah, uh, kale, spinach, mustard greens, collard greens, uh, grass-fed butter is better, yes. If, Henry, if you're having non-grass-fed red meat, it's beyond toxic. I mean, we're, it's, it's just garbage. The sick cows. I don't think I'm going to check it out. we got a troll here. Goodbye, troll. Make sure that you're gone. Yep, troll's gone. Artichoke's kind of hard on carp, so no artichokey. Can't adapt to high protein keto, adapt to vegetarian keto. Why do vegetarian keto? It's not a first choice. It's it's like desperate last means. People eat too much uh, protein on keto because they want a sense of fullness because they cut out the rice and anything that's, you know, makes your stomach bloat or the yeast. And then they eat too much protein and then they don't adapt because that excess protein converts back into glucose. You can only eat, chew, swallow, break down, get into the small intestine bloodstream protein at a certain speed so the more you throw in the body's like i can't use it that fast people and your insulin is res resistant so i'm going to convert some of this excess protein into sugar and use that and block you from keto adapting 25 percent of grass-fed beef is okay i don't know what you mean by that you mean in your day My 53 grams of protein is about three fingers worth cooked of chicken thighs, salmon or salmon, uh, grass fed patties, for example, uh, pork, pork shoulder, pork belly, ribeye, right? A little palm, a palm full cooked or three fingers. There's, there's a measurement, three meals a day. Let's see. Types of keto food. Do you think it's best to debate the vegan community? I would never. I would give myself a friggin' headache. But why would I debate anybody? There's nothing to debate. I've worked with almost 3,000 people. I don't need to debate anyone. Not to sound like a jerk, but debating people who are so far into their beliefs, let them believe it. You know? I don't want to debate anybody. If they believe it, let them believe it. Yeah, overbake br Brussels sprouts where you get rid of all the fiber, they become high in carbs. So you can't overbake them. I'm sorry. Yeah, you guys are agreeing on the whole vegan debate. It's just like somebody saying, oh, what do you think of Trump? I was like, I don't think anything. I don't. I just, I let people believe whatever they want to believe. Maybe this happens when you get older, right? Because I used to be feisty before. Maybe someone might like pluck, like people will oh, keto can give you a heart attack. And I'll be just like, okay, keep believing that. You know, oh, keto is making my cholesterol high. And I was like, well, what plaques the arteries? Is it the cholesterol? Is it the LDL? Is it the low density lipoprotein? Know your cholesterol 
molecules and what they mean. So then I can let them go. So people ask me stuff on my social media and I'm like, Google it. They're trying to refute what I'm saying. Well, I heard that ketones make candida grow. I said, well, go check it, test and see. <laughs> like they'll try to debate me and all, I don't care. My book is gonna come out in 2018. Um, yeah, I'm still writing it guys. So like I said, I'm writing the book. I have to turn it into the publishing company for them to then, uh, edit and then send it back to me and then edit and send it back. And then it finally done. And then they announce a pre-sale sale, and then they start selling it in stores and Amazon, all that stuff. And, um, actually I took a, like a couple week break from the book. I'm restarting it. I went to Iceland for my 50th birthday. I thought I'd treat myself. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna be 50. Like nobody's gonna give me the bang like I'm gonna give myself one. And then I've gotta go and see my mother. So while seeing my mother, I don't wanna worry about a book. I just gotta worry about that crazy woman. Just help my mama and then, and then I'll really crank up the book and then I'll talk about more what I'm writing about. Thank you, Basil. Basil or Basil? About the book. One-on-one -on -one consultations are now available. Took a, I gotta get a new web person because the one I have cannot figure out why it still says that I'm gone May. Uh, we tried to get it off the site, but don't book from your phone or from a tablet because you get this weird notification we try to get rid of. I gotta get a new person. Uh, book from your, uh, your uh, computer, desktop, or laptop. Then it shows up right. Fasting is starvation and it's anorexia and it damages your body. Why before people are saying that dieting is bad and now you put intermittent fasting label on and it's good for you. Not if you have hypoglycemia, not if you have insulin resistance, not if you have PCOS, not if you've got like, no, no. Adrenal insufficiencies, eat people, stop dieting to lose weight. What I'm drinking, everybody asks me what I'm drinking from the red cup, I'm drinking water, look at that. People always go like, so what do you like drink? Can you drink on keto? I'm like, water? Hello? Why can't you poop? Because you're not drinking enough water. <laughs> you know that you're histamine intolerant when you have all issues, like you're bloated, you're farty, your stool's loose, it floats, it's yellow, <laughs> um, it's mushy, you get itchy throat, you got dandruff, you got eczema, skin issues. Uh, like the list goes on and on and on. You're tired. You just don't digest well. Intermittent fasting is dieting. I always explain this to people. I've said this so many times. I know what it's like to be like a rock star singer singing the same song. It's like, do you enjoy that song? Um, floating poop means that you're malabsorptive or you have candida. Uh, yes, yeah, so that means you have holes in the gut lining. You yeah, have leaky gut. Google. Now the, uh, fasting. Okay. When you're not keto adapted, you grow up on carbs and the brain wants carbs. So you cut out the carbs and you're like, I'm going to fast and make ketones and use body fat as a gasoline source. But the body's like, I don't know how to make ketones and use them yet. So you need to give me some time because I'm used to running on carbs. So when you're skipping meals, now your blood sugar is more unstable. And we have unstable blood sugar to start with. A lot of you have adrenal issues. You produce too much cortisol, too low cortisol. Uh, a lot of you have anxiety, depression. You're on medications. The liver is not functioning properly. You don't sleep well. And then you're gonna go all night not eating and then you're get up, gonna get up and not eat again. And the brain's like, uh, where's gasoline drive car? I mean, you're driving a Maserati on nothing. So I'm gonna go to your muscle and your skin. I'm gonna break down that skin and convert it into gasoline. That's what the body does. It'll take collagen from under the skin, bone marrow, skin itself, convert it into sugar so your brain can get what it, what it wants because you guys intermittent fast for aesthetics, but the brain does not care about you wanting to look aesthetic. The brain only cares about surviving. And if it's addicted to glucose, it will make sugar out of your muscle like that in three minutes, done. Lemon over grapefruit. Yeah, grapefruit unfortunately has too much fructose to adapt, especially for newbies 
once you're adapted, you've got great GLUT4 receptor development. Some of you can go back to some berries and low glycemic fruits if you can clear out the glucose quite, quite well. Most of you cannot. A lot of you guys are coming from the school of metabolic damage. Sorry, intermittent fasting is dieting, okay, ordinary person. Uh, it's not about calories and it's not about a window, okay? So if you eat twice a day and you're driving that Maserati without uh, putting gasoline in, you're going to burn muscle. It's not about calories. It's the timing of your food in comparison to what form of fuel that your brain runs on. You can only fast, okay? If you're going to do nothing because then you will not be expending energy that's what our hunter gatherers did if they were in fasted uh, starvation if they were starving they wouldn't move they wouldn't do cardio and go to their job and be on the cell phone and have screaming kids and like you know deal with all the pressures of modern society if they were not eating they rested so people are like I do great on intermittent fasting uh, I know that you don't got the business like Steph does. I just know that you don't. People fast because they want to look aesthetic. Let's just be real. Adam, I'm 50 years old, as of a week ago. I was born in 1967. <laughs> No, not when you're trying to adapt. You can't run a few times per week. You just got to keep your body calm in the beginning. And then you want to fast on top of that. That's why I don't have people fast because the adrenals overwork. I definitely got the business, right? Boom. 50. 50. 50. It's not, this is not genetics. This is epigenetics. It's me manipulating my own genetic potential. And most people aren't willing to do whatever it takes. Somebody said to me, oh, you know, you've got those vices. I go, nope, I got, they're all gone now. I've literally tested myself with vices and I've let them go. I don't want the material world and food to run my ability to stay focused and heal from the inside out. Colonics suck out lovely bacteria that we work our whole life to keep and then it's gone. Why would I stick a tube up my bum to pull out stool and pull out lovely bacteria that I've worked on. No. That's like a one time in my life, maybe. And people do this stuff all the time, or coffee bean enemas, which do the same thing. Liver cleansing can be done in a gentle way, which you could just use milk thistle and uh, plant pectins from apple cider vinegar or lemon water, uh, herbs like ginger and uh, uh, turmeric um, and then people actually do like flushes but you have to go on the internet and read there are kits to help you do that and it's pretty hard on the body so I'm not gonna go and tell you to do it no cream cheese oh Janet's saying no cream cheese thank you Janet hi Janet how you doing child you see I'm feeling much better I was wrecked the last three days but I'm back example of low glycemic fruits avocado Olives, lemons, limes, coconut. <laughs> People get so pissed when I do that. <laughs> the higher lower would be pears, green apples, uh, grapefruit, but not for keto newbies. Thoughts on sprinting and keto. Uh, sprinting is going to overstimulate the adrenals to make more blood sugar, no. Eating 70 grams of protein, 140 grams of fat is not ketogenic. The fat's too low. 140 grams of fat is why you're hungry. You need to be from two to 300 grams of fat. 12 tablespoons of fat at the minimum, that only takes you to about what, 167 grams? Yeah, 12 tablespoons of fat to start with. We got 90 people in the chat and 106 likes. If you're new people coming on to this chat, please like up the stream and let me know if you're enjoying this broadcast because the liking pushes this broadcast to a more visible area. Been watching for years. I never got what? You never got what, Richard? <laughs> so
So it is 6.10 and I'm almost done with this broadcast. No, it hasn't worked for you, ordinary person. It hasn't. You're telling yourself that it has. And everyone who intermittent fasts are like, oh, it works for me. It doesn't work for you. If you were to actually talk to me, you'd be like, dang, Steph, you really shed light on aspects that I didn't know was going on. People will always say that things work for them because it's the subjective mind. Saying that something works for you, just that description is, it's nondescript. It's very one broad stroke. There's no details in it. So people, people could say whatever they wanted to. I could say that I'm in perfect health and nothing's wrong with me. And then you guys would just have to believe it. People are like, oh, well, Stephanie, I want you as my coach because look how, look how healthy you look. And I'm like, yes, I look healthy. But under the hood of the car, there's dysfunctionality that I always have to work with. And so, you know, I can tell you that everything's perfect in my life. I could say that my life is perfect. That would not be true. So with extreme things that affect the adrenal glands, you have to be in ketosis and you have to be consistently in ketosis for intermittent fasting to work. Otherwise, you're burning through your amino acids and that's just science. There's nothing you can do about it. Like you can't refute facts. It's the way it is. Uh, HCL, but you don't have to take HCL if you have issues with the gallbladder. It's mostly the, the ox bile salts. Potassium supplements are really toxic for the liver. I would just go for the high potassium foods. I do do meal plans. I sell them on my website. Yoga is great uh, to relax you, um, but I wouldn't stop time under tension. Time under tension uh, resistance training is the best, bar none. Even though you know resistance training can get uh, yeah, fish oils, sure, high quality. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So Deborah's saying that she, uh, she's like, listen up guys, you have to increase your fats. Decrease your fats, yes. And the ratio of likes went up, so thanks guys, even higher. It's a good broadcast, even though I'm like, I'm in a chill zone right now. The ketogenic Bible, somebody made one already. It's not very good though. I was like, there are some snapshot ideas in here, and then there's just crap in this. I was like, why well, call this the Bible? That name I'll never use now again. If you felt nauseous on increasing your fats, then you might have a gallbladder problem. Sorry. It's not the fats. It's something with your gallbladder. Uh, resistance training will start gluconeogenesis. We're always in a state of gluconeogenesis. But if you're, it won't create more gluconeogenesis if you do it the right way. Um, you're what, soccer what? Can a soccer player be on keto? Absolutely. You just need to do it like on the off season so you can adapt then. It's the same thing with fitness competitors. Don't do it in the middle of a bunch of stress. Is cold press, I just flax oils just, I mean, yeah, it's approved, but Yo, flax oil is just not stable. That stuff oxidizes like that. Yeah, you heal the gallbladder by doing flushes. There are kits for that. You can go online and look for that. Um, and changing your diet. Don't sit in a C shape, which clogs up the biliary of the gallbladder. And uh, check to see if you're estrogen dominant. And, if, and try to stabilize your blood sugar. So it's not like this, but it's more like this. That will help heal the gallbladder. Not everyone who's joining this chat is doing keto, but at least a low carb, high fat protocol is better than the standard American diet or the stupid bodybuilder diet. Butter. If anyone's asking me what's better, coconut oil, grass fed butter, 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 as long as you don't have a histamine intolerance to it, then that'd be lard, 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 or duck fat. Um, animal fats are uh, supreme to create viable ketones because of their fatty acid profile of mono, the SFAs, the MUFAs, the PUFAs, and the SFAs, as well as the fat soluble vitamins and the omega 3s. Boom! No, you don't have to eat 7 to 10. I just suggest that people get their antioxidants from 7 to 9, not 10. 
oh, you can season your foods with a lot of stuff, like herbs, Italian herbs. Uh, you could do ginger, and you can do um, uh, uh, curries if you don't have a histamine reaction to curries. You can use nutritional yeast as long as you don't go too high in it. There's tons of spices, really good ones too. Still like watching your videos even though we don't agree. You're so funny. We can't disagree with science, ordinary. It is just what it is, you know? You can't or you can't disagree with science. You might feel great, but there's a lot of people that diet. Is my battery dying? A lot of people who diet who go, I feel great. But you know, if you jumped into my body, right? You if you jumped into stuff spot, you'd be like, dang, I didn't know I could feel this way. I got some energy. You change. So, you know, how we feel is subjective. Okay, you love curries. If you're estrogen dominant and don't have a gallbladder, what's your question? Adapting or ox bile salts? I'm not sure what the question's about. You need to get a good brand of topical. I don't have, I'm not a brand pusher anymore because sometimes they change the ingredients and then. People are like, Stephanie, you said, and so now I just say, do your research on high quality supplements. Somebody asked about supplements before. I don't like supplements. I only use, and then you cycle them unless you have a no gallbladder, things of this nature. I eat all, I eat just whatever. I used to have like, you know, keto pancakes a lot. I'd make a keto sausage. Now I just eat whatever. Whatever's in my kitchen that's keto approved. Yeah, spring mix or of lettuce, romaine is fine, yeah. High intensity interval training should be after you adapt because anything that's gonna overexcite the adrenal glands is gonna crank out the cortisol and blood sugar and it's a wrap. Don't believe me? Get a glucometer, test your blood sugar after a high intensity session of sprints. You'll be like, wow, Stephanie was right. Okay guys, we're an hour and 22 min minutes and it's time for me to live my life off the internet. Actually not, because i got to go to my keto course page and answer questions there. <laughs> I have to get on my workout clothes and go take a shower. Um, Yannette, 200 grams of fat. Keto, this is not a diet. This is the ketogenic diet. It's a high-fat diet. If you want to get into ketosis, you have to eat 200 grams of fat. You won't make viable ketones. If you just want to diet, then just don't eat that much food. But I don't suggest that because you'll destroy your metabolism. Keto is about eating high fat. Once you're fully adapted, you can moderate your fat and change your exercise to, to access more body fat. But when you start doing the ketogenic diet, it has nothing to do with losing weight. Just forget about it. It's about, it's about healing your issues and training your brain to run on viable ketones. It's not about weight loss. So the internet is wrong. I'm sorry that you, they lied to you and gave you a lot of you know, stupid information. But keto is not about weight loss. It's just about healing the body. No cardio ever. If you're a runner, if you're an athlete, if you're a cyclist, if you're doing mixed martial arts, um, but to just do cardio for what? For what? No. You don't, calories are, you know, they're, they're completely irrelevant. I'll say this again, you can take 500 calories from cookies and 500 calories from steak. Which one's going to make you fat? The cookies, because they're processed, broken down sugar. That's going to spike your insulin. Insulin's the thing that makes you fat, guys. Why are you not checking your insulin and your blood sugar and your A1C? I'm super fit. I could go eat a bunch of carbs right now and not store fat because I've got great glute forward development. So I'm going to lower that blood sugar quite well because my body's healthy. So you don't count calories. It's the state of your metabolism, as well as the ability to regulate your insulin and your estrogen. That's what it's about. My book will be available in Canada and worldwide if I have to freaking force it out of them to make sure they get enough distributors worldwide. Listen to your wife. Apple wrote what? exclamation question mark oh, let me see here I gotta turn on this light because now the sun's going down oh that's not going on what's going on oh there oh it's too bright K 
Okay guys, I'm 125 minutes. I should probably go live my life and standard, what is this? Standard high keto fats three days ago, I gained five pounds but lost three, that's just water. If you lose and gain weight on a scale in days, just go get a DEXA scan. Then you know if it's fat or muscle or whatever. Thank you, S, what is it, SBG? I can't wait for, you, the one person who wants this book done and out more than anyone on this planet is me. I'm over it. So I need to get it done. The book writing process is not easy, especially the book I'm writing. This is gonna be like the mothership of books on keto. You lost 20 pounds before starting keto. Everything's non-contextualized, so it doesn't really matter. It's arbitrary. You know, if you're doing keto and you're gaining weight, it's because you're doing it wrong. And you have to adapt first, because keto is not about weight, losing weight, it's about getting healthy. And then once you're fully adapted, then you know, the metabolism is balanced and then your body will access ketones and burn body fat. And you can potentially intermittent fasting for short periods of time once fully adapted. Problem is, people are too impatient to adapt. They're eating 130 grams of fat, like that person said, where you need to get your fat over 200. You must adapt first before considering weight loss on keto. And so you go online, it's like, I lost this much weight doing keto, when you really just lost a lot of muscle and water. People lost weight too on Atkins. You know, people just got it wrong. Yes, you can do mild resistance training and adapt. Yes. Uh, yeah, Allison, you're doing a lot of stuff wrong. I know for a fact. I do consultations every day with people who've done keto for a while. That's why they come to me. They're like, I've done it for this long. And they come to me. I'm like, did you consider this, 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 this? They're like, oh, I didn't consider that. Oh, wow, I didn't consider that. Oh, I didn't realize. They're like... They're like, whoa, like they thought they knew, they don't know. So, you know, I suggest a consultation at this point. If you've, been, if you've been doing keto for five months and still don't have ketogenic symptoms or your blood sugar is still too high or too low. Glucose 80, ketones 5.7. Your ketones, Freddie, are rising too high. They have nowhere to go. You're not using ketones. They're wasted. That's why there's a tight zone, right? It's the same thing with diabetes. Blood sugar rises too high. It doesn't have anywhere to go. Ketones rise too high, it's not dangerous, but your body's not using them, it's just rising. It's trying to get into a cell, but it's not getting into the cell to be used, and that's why people don't have the energy that I have. Even though I haven't had three days of sleep. Pink, pink. Okay guys, I feel a little dehydrated because I'm not drinking enough water and talking and expelling water. Yes, I still sell meal plans on my website. Does, does grease from bacon count as animal fat? Uh, yes, but you better lick it off the pan then. Because if you don't lick it off the pan, then it doesn't count. Uh, you write down your symptom, symptoms for the person who said, if I don't have any access to keto uh, blood strips, then you have to journal. Energy level, appetite, all of that. Poop quality, you know. Everything. Hormones. Good night. Was that Ken said good night? See, Ken's smart. Or Kim. Kim's like, you know, my husband looks like a bodybuilder, even though, wait, your husband looks like a bodybuilder, even though he just keeps 40 pounds in six months and I really believe it's because his body never went into catabolic state. Uh, explain? I don't know. I don't know. I just have to, like, when I talk to people for real, it, it's a game changer. People saying their perceptions on anything is one thing, but seeing and talking is the next to believe. One person's version of a bodybuilder. Like, people be like, oh my, she's such in great shape. And I'm like, mm, I see their skin's dry, and she's got muscle loss in certain parts of her glutes. She's dieting too hard, but because a woman has a flat stomach and muscles, people are thinking that the person looks great. But I can see somebody who's been doing a lot of cardio and they're flat, they're very veiny, skin's dry like crazy, they're gaunt in the face. These are the things that are indicative of dieting too hard for fitness competitions, but another woman could be like, wow, she looks amazing. You know, you just gotta be careful for that stuff. 
Hey guys, thank you so much for joining the broadcast. My knee is starting to hurt. The sun's going down. It's time to get this body relaxed. Let's see, I started keto when I lost. Yeah, exercise, whole foods. I can't wait three months to adapt. Sad face. Don't be sad. Be happy. Be happy that good things in our life can come. Thank you guys. Take care. Good night, El Green and Richard. And so it's waiting for your glucometer to come. Yay! Drinking fatty tea right now. Awesome. Flex, please. When I sit, when I when I flex, people are like, "You're showing off. Stop showing off." <laughs> My old video, you love your body so much. I was like, should I hate my body? Should I hate myself? Must love self to love others. Oh, right? You know, sleep lower more than myself, ready? My, the intermittent fasting plan is just by demand and it's uh, for people who fully adapted and not for any other person but that. Arm wrestle you. No, I'm not that, I'm not that, uh, you know, flex and do this and do that and do da 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 da. You should not count carbs and avocados because of the fat and fiber slows down the rate at which the carbohydrate is converted into glucose and hitting the blood. So therefore, do not count it and do not count the protein as well. Bye, Sam. Bye, Whitney. Is it Whit Whitney? Did it say Whitney? No. Whitey man? <laughs> Is that what it says? <laughs> yeah, I am proud. I think uh, turning 50 was uh, not, um, what was it? It just felt like another day. It wasn't like I'm looking in the mirror and it was a, you know, a huge wake up moment that I'm now, you know, half my life is gone, for example. I don't feel that way. And I feel that when people say when you, it's, this happens when you get older, you know, you're premenopausal when you get older, you know, you need to do stuff when you're younger. Like that's arbitrary in my case. I do what I want, when I want and how I want to do it. I dress how I want. I'll dress this way at 50. I'll act whatever way I want. And, um, I want other people to feel that way as well, that you can't let society dictate the expression of the internal you. So I look young on the outside. It's not because of the aesthetics. It's that I, I'm young on the inside. So my life is about discovery and doing new things to keep my mind fresh. I don't want to limit anything. So I feel like I'm in my 20s in regards to, you know, like you put me on a skateboard right now, like, like, let's go. Like, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid to travel. I'm not afraid of weird things to happen being in awkward situations. I don't want to control my environment. I only you know, want the friends around me. No, I always want to meet new people. I always want to have new experiences. I always want to do stuff off the cuff and a little slightly dangerous to make my heart go like this. And um, I want to always express myself in the way that I want to. And I don't want to cater to what anybody in society says that you should be when you sit, hit a certain age. So being on the internet has been very, very interesting for me in uh, turning off the noise, right? Don't respond, because I'm a responder. People say stuff, hot button, boom, Stephanie responds. Now I'm starting to not care, and that's the only thing about 50 that I love, is the fact that I don't care what that person thinks anymore. Let them think that. You know, people will come up to me and straight debate uh, protein with me, for example, or the amount of fat that you should do on a keto protocol, because this person said, and I said, well, okay, follow that person, <laughs> you know, or this person's like, well, intermittent fasting works for me. And I'm like, okay, it really doesn't science wise, but sure. Ben and Jerry, you quit keto cause you were feeling really fatigued. You weren't adapting. It's, it's black and white. You either adapt or you don't adapt. It's so you just, you know, that's why I do these live broadcasts and videos and I'm trying to teach people how to not hurt themselves on keto. Thank you, Monica. 
I just, you know, I just want to keep traveling and keep doing stuff, and I keep wanting to mo motivate people and not just talk about keto. I love turning 50, and I want other people to feel... I don't want any one of you people to get afraid to get older. I want you to embrace it and just keep it rocking, right? All right, guys, uh, it's time to go and enjoy my life, and I want you to enjoy your life as well. Get outside of the lines, right? Color outside of the lines. And uh, don't be in the matrix. Don't be a robot. And open your mind. Because you never know what's gonna get inside. Everyone's able to adapt unless they have some horrible genetic disorder where they just never absorb any fat or unable to make ketones. So it's the wrong application of a ketogenic protocol that is the problem, guys. It's not creating ketones, it's not being ketotic. That's the issue, it is doing it the wrong way and there's a million ways to do keto wrong. Number one is to do it for fat loss. Because you have to adapt first. That could take months if not a year. You know, you gotta regulate your blood sugar. The body is science, scientific. Like you gotta understand the body and if you don't understand the body and you just eat whatever because you read something online and you downloaded a stupid keto meal plan or use some stupid keto app, that's not what it's about. Are fats and protein count for being over 200 grams? Yes. Adios, adios. Yeah, you're close with the ketones uh, at a 1.8 and glucose at a 83, but then you have to chart your symptoms to make sure that the ketones are viable. And on that note, guys, I'm out. So have a great freaking life. Live it to the fullest. Don't listen to other people dictate what you should do. Design your own thinking like I do. It's the best. Bye. Hearts, 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 hearts. Anybody else who hasn't liked up the stream, please do like it. I'll be back for more amazing broadcasts. Thank you guys, because these broadcasts would be nothing without you. I'd be just talking to myself. That gets real old. Trust. We need society. We need our humanity. Bye! And I'm out. Peace, guys. StephanieBerson.com, you know, I'm writing a book. And I'm on Instagram, Stephanie Ketogenic. I used to hate Instagram, I'm starting to like it a little bit. Or Stephanie, the business person on my Facebook fan page. Mwah, 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 mwah. Thank you guys, you're awesome. There's been a lovely chat. You guys have been really, really cool, so thank you. I'm out. <laughs>